I'm gonna walk you through my process for designing a ballistic 90s death metal inspired merch design for the one and only Lorna Shore. What's the crack legends? I'm buzzing to be back. One of my favorite commissions of 2022 was this insane t-shirt design for Lorna Shore. It was available on the Pain Remains tour to coincide with the release of their new album. If you're already a viewer of this channel, then you know I am a sucker for the over the top, gritty and vibrant 90s metal merch. What the fuck is up, I'm talking stuff like Dismember, Entombed and Bowl Thrower. So when the lads hit me up with this merch concept of like a reaper riding a Harley Davidson flipping the finger, you know I was down for it. Hopefully this vid can impart a few tips and tricks for photo bashing outrageous death metal merch using my rough and ready process and some killer assets from both Neostock and Envato Elements. Alright grand, enough of that, now let's get cracking. Right, so we're gonna open an A3 artboard and we're gonna invert it to black. I'm gonna get the Lorna Shore logo and I'm gonna put that on the top of the artboard. That's gonna frame our whole design. Now I'm gonna grab these ridiculously cool skeleton 3D models from Envato Elements. And I've actually spun a lot of these models around to get the correct angle because what I want is to put this skeleton on the Harley Davidson motorbike. So as you can see, I pretty much just use my lasso tool there and copied and paste the leg that I want. And I dropped the right leg over the hip and left leg of the first part. This is the pile of bones skulls that I want to use for the base of the t-shirt. Now I've got this hilarious model of like a skeleton riding a bicycle because it's in the right pose that I kind of want. So you can see here I'm using my polygonal lasso tool and I'm just taking out the, the bicycle here. Now I've got this 3D model of the motorbike at the exact angle that I want and I just feathered in the edges there using my refined edge and I'm going to drop this PNG just below the pile of skulls because I want this lad to be doing a wheelie over the top of them and below that layer I've got the model of the skeleton holding the handlebar. Now I grab my right leg and hips here, drop it over the top and the left leg below and I'm carefully putting the feet kind of where the foot peg should be. Now I'm just taking my soft eraser and just sort of blending it in a bit. It doesn't need to be too correct at this stage. Here I've got another 3D model of a skeleton fist that I'm just going to lay over where the handlebar of the bike is. Now I'm just going to do a quick liquify pass and try to bring this right arm of the skeleton down so it kind of aligns with the handlebar of the motorbike. Now I lay the skeleton's fist below the handlebar of the motorbike and just dropping the opacity on the bike layer. I'm using a hard eraser to roughly sort of like chop out where the fingers should be to make it look like this lad is grabbing onto the handlebar. And I clean it up again with our polygonal lasso tool. And this skeleton hand is a little too bright so I pop open our levels and I bring the blacks down to sort of sandwich it in with the rest of this damaged texture of the skeleton model on the bike. Now again from Envato Elements I have this model of a skeleton flipping the finger. It's so funny but it's going to be perfect for what I want here. So I'm gonna lay the rib cage more or less over the dude on the bike here and then use a bit of warp to kind of line it up nicely. I'll then use the polygonal lasso tool to sort of just chop out the rib cage there. Now we drop the opacity of the layer of the left leg and I'm just using our lasso tool to kind of chop out where the foot peg is there. Now I think the skull on this dude is a little bit too cheesy so I've got this cool model from Envato Elements. I'm gonna lay that over the top and rub out the underlying skull. I then bring the levels down again, bringing the blacks down to sort of match it with the rest of the skeleton. Now I grab all the layers of our dude on the bike here and give him a bit more of a tilt to make him look like he's coming at this pile of bones with speed. And again, I drop the levels on the bike itself so it really looks like this dude is flying out of it. Now what does a reaper need? A reaper needs a hood and a cape. So I've got these amazing assets from Neo Stock. So I like this one here because it's kind of face on. I think I'm going to be able to use this for the top of the hood. I'll just use our liquify tool again to kind of bunch up the bottom of the cape. I then grab the outline of the skull layer by pressing control and clicking on the thumbnail of that layer. And then I select the rip cloak layer above. Take my soft eraser and I just brush out the front, but I leave the top of it below the, the hood to give a bit of a shadow. Then I have our cloak layer duplicated and I put one of them below the skeleton itself. And with the top one, I then take our polygonal lasso tool and I chop around these two kind of button bits. So I delete the selection on the top cloak layer, which just means you can see only the one in the back. Now all we have left of the top cloak layer is the hood. Select that layer and then I go into warp and I'm just kind of like dragging the points around to make it sort of fit more naturally. I then make a selection of the motorbike again by pressing control and clicking the thumbnail. And with a hard eraser, I just rub out those bits so it lets those bits poke through. Then I grab our hood layer and I just bring the levels down. A little bit and I was thinking that the cloak was a little too kind of small looking so I wanted to give it a little bit more flow and make it a little bit more natural looking as if he's like as I said coming at this pile of bones with speed 
So I grab the second cloak layer, which has a little bit more of a flick to the end of it, and I drop that below our bottom cloak layer. And while you're at it, go check out my new merch line, Realms of Chaos. I got some savage gear up there. You can demonstrate your style in your local pit like a top geezer with all the this and this and this. Then I'm going through and selecting different parts of the skeleton layers and then grabbing our cloak layers and rubbing out the different bits because we want to expose all the bones that you would be able to see. So it's just these two buttons that are hanging over the front and the rest of the skeleton is visible. And while I'm doing that, I'm also going in with uh, the burn tool just giving a little bit of shadow to make it look a little bit more natural. Now I figured this Reaper dude is looking a bit naked jakey, so we're gonna give him some armor here. And I've got this cool model from Envato Elements of this pure barbarian chaos looking skeleton dude with spiked armor, it's sick. So I'm going in and I'm taking the arm guards here, just chopped it out with my polygonal lasso tool, and I'm going in and dropping them over parts of the skeleton that I think would look nice. And I really like these shoulder pads with the sort of like leather belts here. So again, roughly going in, with the polygonal lasso tool and I've chopped that out. Now that I've dropped this armor over the rib cage, you can see it's not really lining up. So I'm going in with my warp tool and I'm just pushing things around to make it really seem like it's fitted on this dude. And once I thought it was looking all right, I just make a selection of our motorbike and press delete and it just chops out all those handlebars out of it. Now I've got the same model of a skeleton at a different angle here, which is the beauty of Envato. You can spin these around, it's perfect for photo bashing. So I'm taking out this piece of the leg armor here and I figured it would look perfectly as sort of, you know, knee guards or whatever for this dude that's like rallying around on his bike. You don't want to come off a Harley at 60 mile an hour, do you? After that, I grab this sick sight. I'm just kind of playing around with how it would naturally look on his back as he's like flying along. I'll just bring the levels up a bit so you can see more of the texture in the metal and then get the dodge tool to give a little bit more highlights. Now we go and grab the skull layer and this is kind of my signature move. Yeah. I'm going in with a hard eraser and I'm just like erasing certain teeth here and there to give them a really like messy appearance. Then I go in with our liquify tool and bring the brush right down and just start feathering out these teeth to make them real long and disgusting. You can see this lad hasn't been to the dentist in about a thousand years and it really shows. But I do this with all the skeletons that I do, give them real spiky, disgusting teeth. It gives them this real menacing sort of look with a little bit of humor in there and I just love it. Again, with our liquify tool, I just go bring the sight out and make it look a little bit more gnarly and then bring the levels down again so you can see a little bit more damage in the blade. Now I'm pretty happy with this geezer, he's looking suitably horrible. So I grab all of the layers that comprise this skeleton and I just spin them, give them a little bit more of a tilt. After that, all I do is I open camera raw filter, which is one of the most powerful tools in Photoshop, I believe. And I go in and whack the texture and the clarity up um, to really give a lot of crispness and almost cartoonish sort of feeling. And I rinse and repeat with all of the individual layers on this lad and you can see it gets really gritty. Then with my liquify, I again just pull out the flicks on the end of this dude's cloak. Again, just providing a little bit more motion to the overall figure. Then I grab the bike layer and with the polygonal lasso tool, I just sort of go in and I grab the front wheel I give it a refined edge, like smooth it and feather it a lot to round it up, and then I copy and paste it. Then with the isolated wheel layer, I go into filter, into blur, give it a bit of a, a motion blur. Then I go back into camera raw and give it another texture and clarity. And this is sort of just to make it look like the wheel is spinning. I then play around with some shadows on the different layers in the skeleton. This You don't really need to do this. I'm just getting a bit anal here. And I spent a little bit longer than I really should have getting bogged down in the details because this is all going to get mashed together with texture. Now that I'm happy with this Harley riding geezer, I'm going to go in and start with the color work and the fire and the different sort of atmospheric effects. Come here to me a second. I just want to say a huge thank you to Carbon Killer, the absolute legend. He's provided some pump and dark wave tunes to go over these videos and I can't thank him enough. So make sure you go over to his band camp, buy some records, buy some merch, spin those tunes because this is electronic music meets metal in the most beautiful way. Thank you dude, you're a legend. First of all, I take this amazing lens flare from Neo Stock, and I'm just gonna pop this over the light. I like it in red, so I'll leave it as red. I'm gonna whack a linear dodge blend mode on that. Then with these delish fire 3D models from Envato Elements, I'm gonna drop them in over this little lad's eyeballs because I want them to look mental. Now to provide a little bit more visual interest, I take this gnarly chain and I'm just gonna stick it over the sight there. I make a selection of the sight and with my eraser, I just take the middle part out there so it looks like it's really wrapping around. So with these sick fire acid, from Envato Elements. I'm just going to start dropping them around 
the uh, pile of skulls and bones here. I'm messing around, seeing what looks good to the eye, if you get me. I drop two flames behind the pile and I put two over the top and I just start playing around with pin light blend mode. Duplicate it, put the above flame back to normal blend mode and just feather out the bottoms with like soft erasers. And it gives that sort of chaotic, oversaturated 90 sort of feel we're going for. And again, I take these nice sparks that I got from Neo Stock and just lay them over the top to give a little bit more noise as to what's going on. Then I felt like this lad is bursting over these skulls. There's gonna be like stuff flying everywhere. So I got this gnarly acid from Invado Elements of this pile of bones and with my free lasso tool, I'm just going in and chopping bits out and just firing them around to really make it look like he's bursting through them. They're a little bit too light, so I go into camera raw filter and I just play with the exposure and the color there and the temperature and tint. Uh, just to kind of make them a little bit more similar to what we're looking at. Now we're going to start painting in light. This is one of the most important parts of the whole design. This is going to lock it all in together. Then I'm going to grab the cloak layer, make a selection of that, and on a new layer, I'm going to use our soft brush and paint in some orange. Then I'm going to use color dodge as the blend mode and with a soft eraser, kind of just feathered in a bit, just to make it look like the flames really glowing off the bottom of the cloak. I'm gonna rinse and repeat and do the same on the bike. And again, just soften it in so it's just the bottom of the wheels that are like catching the glow of the flames. Then I'm gonna make a selection of our pile of bones. I'm gonna make a new layer, put it on color burn blend mode and with our orange paintbrush, just paint in all that color. Now I've got this like mental portal looking black hole thing. I got it off Invado Elements. It's a really cool background, so I figured this lad's gonna be bursting through a black hole and I'm just gonna lay that there on the bottom. I then duplicate the layer and I put the top layer on soft light blend mode. And that'll really bring out the colors and also make the black so much deeper. I've then taken this cool grunge frame that I made donkeys years ago. I don't know when I made this, but all I'm gonna do is lay this over the top and that'll give it a nice sort of like poster sort of frame to it if you get me, but it's just kind of gritty and grunge. And then grabbing Kaylin's amazing Lorna Shore logo, I'll put that on the very top and I'll put a nice soft drop shadow on it. After that, I grab all of the layers in one selection and I'm just gonna push it around the artboard and really see what looks best in relation to the logo. Now that I'm really happy with this Reaper and the pile of bones that he's like rallying over, I'm gonna grab every single one of these layers and I'm just gonna merge them. I'm then gonna put the same sort of drop shadow on to really break the piece up from the background. Now with a quick camera raw, I'm just gonna bring the tint up so he's a little bit bluer. It'll take out a lot of the yellows of the bone. Now it's time for texturing. Got all these uh, crazy blood splat and drip textures. I'm gonna drop them all onto the artboard here. Now with our blood drip layer, I'm just gonna keep copying and pasting it all over the figure here and all over the bones as well. Then when I think this dude is suitably drenched in blood, I'm gonna merge the blood drip layer, make a selection of the Reaper. I'm gonna invert the selection and then press delete. Then I'm gonna use multiply as a blend mode to make it look like this blood is soaked into him and then use a soft eraser to sort of take a lot of the hardness out of it. Then I'm gonna do the same with the blood splats. Again, copying and pasting and just firing it all around the Reaper here. Then I'm gonna merge them all together. I'm gonna to use multiply as our blend mode. I'll make a selection of the Reaper, invert that selection and then delete. As you can see, all this really does is busy up the overall design and make this lad look a little bit more filthy. Now I'm gonna play around with this lightning. I'm kind of just using the warp tool to kind of bend them around. Just using different blend modes like color dodge and then a little bit of twirl and then a soft eraser to kind of blend it in. I was kind of just seeing if I can make him look like he's like electrified as he's like rallying around, but I thought that was a little bit too much. So I opted then just to go a little bit more subtle and make it look like the bike itself is like pulsating with electricity. I then just sort of changed the hue of the flame and eyes a bit to make them a little bit more pink. Then considering the background is purpley blue, I've made a selection of our Reaper and I'll just use the color dropper to take some of that purple. Then with a soft paintbrush, I've painted in some of that bluey purple on the top. This is gonna break it up and blend it a little bit more into the overall panel because the orange on the bottom is quite strong. I then use Color Dodge as my blend mode just to get it all neat and dandy. Now I'm playing around, color correcting a little bit, putting a little bit of a colder tint on the background. And again, I've duplicated our lightning and I'm kind of feathering in a little bit more just to give a little bit more madness to the whole thing. Now for some lighting effects, I got this really cool like glow from Neo Stock. And I'm just gonna put it over his like middle finger there using the screen as the blend mode. Cause I don't know why, I just thought it'd be funny if it was like a focal point on his like middle finger. I use this nice lens flare as well with color dodge. Now that I'm pretty happy with this dude, I just save another PSD and call it details and I can start to focus on the typography. Now beneath the central illustrative sort of figure of the whole t-shirt design, I'm gonna put the Pain Remains Tour underneath and I'm gonna use my font, the Storm, 
you can get the Storm and loads of other goodies in the Spearhead goodie bag, link is in the description. And I really like this font because it's a hand-drawn sans serif and it's nice and gritty, it means you don't really need to play around with displacement maps or anything, it's good to go. I then rasterize and center that because I'm going to chrome it later. Now for the Lorna Shore logo, to save time I've used the chrome kit layer styles, I'm going to leave a link for that in the description, I can't remember who made it. But it's brilliant, they're just layer styles, some of them are really nice, some of them are mm, not great. But I find I use maybe three or four of them quite a bit and um, as I said really good time savers, highly recommend it. So I pick a layer style that I like, then I go back into Bevel and Emboss and change the glow and stuff to make it suit more what I want. Uh, as you can see it was red so I decided just to rasterize the whole thing, then go into my hue and saturation and change it so it's a little bit more pinky. And on a new layer I went in and just whacked in a nice sort of like cyan magenta gradient. I then changed the blend mode to overlay and that just gave it sort of a nice I guess bluish hue. Then I used the same layer style for the Pain Remains Tour part and as you can see I'm just sort of going by eye here trying to get it a similar hue to the logo above. Nothing too strict. Now as we say in Ireland we are sucking diesel. So I've merged the full skeleton, all of the texture, the lightning, the lighting effects and the background onto one layer. I then go into Camera Raw Filter and I whack up the texture and whack up the clarity. The same layer, I open Lens Correction, I bring the red and the cyan fringe right down, I then bring the green and magenta fringe right up, and then the blue and yellow fringe right down, and that gives it the chromatic aberration feeling. That's what you see in like a lot of video games when it gives it that 3D edging to the whole image. I go into Filter, I go into Blur, and I go into Radial Blur. And then I put a zoom radial blur of about 10 on the whole image. And then I take a soft eraser and I erase out the inside part so it's just the edge that's blurred. Then I go into Camera Raw Filter and I fire up the clarity in the texture. And as you can see it gives it that like chaotic sort of edge. I then do the same thing to the logo, give it that chromatic aberration by going into our lens correction and whacking down the red and cyan, up the magenta and green and down the blue and yellow. Then I'm going to save this as a new PSD and call it color. After that I take this really nice lens fair from Neostock and just kind of pop it over the top and put it on a color dodge blend mode and then I'm just going to spin it around and see what looks nice. After that we duplicate the layer, we go back into camera raw and crank the clarity and texture up again. Then we go into image size and we're going to bring the whole artboard up to 9000 pixels in height, essentially doubling the size of the whole image. This is so we can get some really crispy detail when we move on to the next phase which is our texturing using our Xerox trick in the filter gallery. If you want to find out how to do this in far more detail I've already got a tutorial recorded you can click the link up there and check it out. After I'm happy with my Xeroxing, I just take that Xerox layer and I put it on multiply and then drop the opacity down to about 60. That lets all the color of the image below kind of come through but we still have that flat Xeroxing on top. I then rinse and repeat this process on both the logo and the typography of the t-shirt and that gives it that like horrible screen printed sort of feeling that we want. Then I grab our Reaper layer and I just spin the hue out a bit so it's a little bit more spacey, a little bit more chaotic. I didn't like how like warm the oranges were so I gave them more of a purpley kind of tint. I also bumped the saturation up 100%. Sometimes when you have your Xerox layer above with the multiply blend mode on, it really can take away a lot of the vibrance of the layer beneath. So you're going to want to compensate for that by really cranking the saturation. While it will still be muted a bit, you can proper go overboard with this because you want all of those colors to pop through. After this, you can see I'm just messing around here. I'm really just playing around with more color correction. You'll do this by eye yourself. It's all a matter of taste. Merge every layer together and then I open up Camera Raw Filter and I'll go in and I'll just start playing with like our exposure, playing with our color a little bit kind of crunching it up a bit more with clarity to give it that horrible crusty t-shirt feeling. Then you can do something like posterize, you can open up posterize and bring it down to maybe like five or six levels. That'll take a lot of the gradients out and flatten your colors together to give it again more of a t-shirt print feeling. And with that we are pretty much done. As you can see here with the final version the band did have a few changes that's completely normal, it's part of the game. I provided the design for them and they gave me feedback and the feedback was more lightning and I was like hell yeah. You can see I also changed the chroming a little bit but all with the same sort of processes that I used in this video. And I have to say there is quite a bit involved in this but it's nothing you can't do. So there we go. 
That's how I made one of the sickest merch designs that I have ever made for one of the sickest metal bands on the planet right now. So I hope this video shed some light on some of my processes for photo bashing, grunging, and chroming my way to 90s death metal madness. As always, please feel free to shout in the comments if you got any questions about the process. And go on, pop into the Scrap Heap Discord server and join like-minded metal, punk, and techno designers. It is a good time. Come here, don't forget that you can get the Spearhead goodie bag at the link in the description. It's got tons of assets, fonts, stock photos that you can use to your heart's content. And if one of the tutorials on this channel helped you put a design together, like please send it to me over on Instagram. I love seeing them and I'll be happy to reshare it. It really makes my day. Thank you for sticking true to the end. You're an absolute legend. I'm glad to be back. I've got big plans for the year and I hope to see us all in the next one.